All right, are we rolling? Are we rolling? We are. We are. Do you like my socks? Why are you filming a video in a bathtub, Katie? You asked too many questions. And this is not the first time that I've filmed a video in a bathtub. I'm just a kid who's born each day I grow some more. Hey you, it's Katie you. Welcome to my royal bathtub. Just kidding, it's my parents, but they never use it. The topic that I'm gonna be discussing today is very touchy and personal and intimate. And so I thought we'd share an intimate space. It's like we're besties having like a bubble bath, except we're fully clothed. There's no water, there's no candlelight. Just me, you, and my laptop with my notes. Today's video is gonna be tackling the myriad of issues surrounding body image, fitness culture, body dysmorphia, self-confidence. The timing is actually perfect because as I'm filming this, it's January 7th. I know that the new year is always the perfect time for people to be like, this is the year that I'm gonna start dieting. This is the year that I'm gonna get my health on track. While those are all good and well for self-improvement, for maintaining your internal and external health, it's very easy to get sucked into looking good instead of feeling good. These are all issues that I have been dealing with at an intense level, privately, and for the past six years of my life. And I didn't think that I would talk about these issues this early. The story that I kept telling myself as to why I wasn't gonna make a body confidence video until much later is like, oh, I'm not done healing. I'm not ready yet, so how am I qualified? I feel like sometimes when we talk about struggles after we've overcome them, it comes from a narrative of triumph. It's like, oh, I overcame it and it wasn't that bad because I made it through, but like in the middle of the struggle, you don't know if you're gonna make it through. So that is why I feel compelled to make this video now as I'm still dealing with the struggle and understand the gravity and therefore I feel like I can be more empathetic to any of you who are going through it. Even though I'm making this video from a place of slight discomfort. I would never have been able to properly process all these realizations I've been making without seeking professional help first. My relationship with food, my eating habits, my body image, I never thought that they were worthy of going to a professional for help. I think oftentimes we think that therapy is for like the insanely traumatized, but therapy will benefit anyone who goes. So if you have the option, please consider it. This video will contain a lot of triggers, so please proceed with caution. Also, all of these opinions are formed from my personal journey. I'm a random stranger talking in a bathtub on the internet. You should not take anything I say seriously. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be tackling in this video and the timestamps will be linked in the description. So first, I'm gonna talk about my journey and my story. Then I'm gonna go into tips and advice. There are very few, but I think that they pack a punch and they will be very effective. <laughs> Part of the video is probably the part that contains the most triggers so if you are sensitive please consider skipping to the next timestamp okay hello everyone this is editing katie popping in i thought i would just refilm the portion of this video where i talk about my journey because i was really nervous filming this video in the bathtub and because i was so nervous i'm not very proud of how i recounted my journey so i'm gonna do it again here i really do think that it does give context and i do want to be open about how i got to this point in my life like it doesn't really make sense for me to not tell you my story and then just go straight into giving you advice on how to deal with body insecurities so i think everyone who struggles with body image or anything regarding eating disorders can testament to the fact that there is a before and after of your life where you don't worry about what you eat versus you do and for me that was sophomore year of high school up until then I ate absolutely anything that I craved and I loved it and that innocence of childhood is a what a lot of us miss right but then sophomore year of high school I start getting very severe eczema all over my face the dermatologist that I was going to prescribed me steroids but I knew that steroids were not a long-term solution because your skin can develop like a dependency and resistance to it. So then I was doing all my own research and I discovered this thing on the internet, the internet, called the eczema elimination diet. This is pretty much where you eliminate multiple food groups, pretty much everything that makes food taste good to essentially purge your immune system of all these toxins. I don't know how the science behind it works. I was an expert on it back then, but I do that for six months, hardest six months of my life. I think I lose like 15 or 20 pounds, um, but it works miraculously. And that was the first time that I experienced food becoming weaponized as a mechanism to change some aspect about my body. And because I knew all these new facts about nutrition and like what's good for you, what's bad for you, the chemicals, pesticides, blah, 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 I could never go back to my innocence when like you're a kid and you don't know how many chemicals there are in a Cheeto, okay? And because I lost so much weight, 
I liked how I looked. So that fueled me into going to the gym to maintain that lifestyle and that physique. But then when I got to college, that was the era of like Kim Kardashian and all the curvy bodies. And so now I suddenly wanted to grow a booty. That was my biggest insecurity at that point in time. And so I get super, super into weightlifting and I am researching all about lean bulking and bulking and cutting and shredding and da da da. I knew everything about macros, counting your calories, ratios, food groups, whatever. For those of you who don't know, a lot of power lifters or lifters in general, to build muscle, they bulk, which is you eat more calories than you burn. So the muscle grows really fast. And then when you want to shred down and show the toning of your muscles, you shred or cut, which is basically when you consume less calories than you burn. So when I was going into my bulking period, when I started getting super into lifting, I was in the gym for two hours every single day. I loved it. For the first time in a few years, I was unrestrictedly eating as much as I wanted until I got full. And this was when my period started becoming regular again. Guys, before this, my period would not come for like six, seven months at a time. And I would literally be like, it's irregular. She's just late. Bro, what? Mental illness, isn't it? I'm actually regular AF. It's just that I wasn't nourishing my body correctly. So my body becomes healthy again through this bulking period. But then I get a comment from a family member saying like, oh, you don't look good. Like you put on weight. And that was the first time that I had ever been told that because my whole life leading up to that point, I'd worked so hard to maintain this leanness, this skinniness. That was also the first time that I realized like, oh, there's this version of me out there in the world that everyone associates me as. And if I don't live up to that, if I step outside, of that boundary people will push me to lose weight to look back as like the katie that we all know and love so that was like really shocking then i tore my acl had to quit powerlifting and i haven't really picked up powerlifting since then it was a fling but we loved her whatever i went back to my restrictive eating habits of just not allowing myself one or two extra cookies da, 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 because I was like, I need to maintain this image of myself. Then I started YouTube and obviously as you stare at your body for like weeks on end, hours on end while editing, you do realize like, oh, if I look slimmer, these clips are a little bit more flattering and the clothes look better. And so I should keep doing this. So it was a toxic cycle. Then... While I'm doing this YouTube thing, very early in the beginning of 2021, I get diagnosed with cataracts at the ripe age of 21. For those of you guys who don't know what cataracts are, they're like the clouding of your eye lens. I don't know the freaking technical terms, but it can lead to blindness if left untreated. And everyone gets this when they're like 70, 80, but it's very rare for a 21 year old to get it. We made the connection like a very rare side effect of the steroid cream that they prescribe to treat eczema is cataracts having a medication that was supposed to solve this problem that was a huge insecurity of mine not work and instead backfire and give me another health complication it further solidified in my brain oh diet is the only thing i can rely on to control my health to improve my health and i clung on to diet and restricting myself and eating like a health nut even more all throughout 2021 until i started going to therapy in the summer of 2021 which is how I was able to process all this, which is why I felt very compelled to make this video, especially in the wake of the new year. And so with that, we are going to go back to the video, back to the bathtub, back to the bathtub. <laughs> and I'm going to be sharing with you my tips that I've picked up ever since going to therapy and also doing my own mindfulness research of how I've been able to live my life in the most healthy, non-restrictive and kind way for anybody else who is struggling with any type of body insecurity or dysmorphia or confidence issues. Yeah. Thing that you do is a habit. Your brain creates habits to optimize your daily life. So brushing your teeth, like putting your socks on. Funny enough, negative thought patterns and bad self-talk, those are also habits. The thing about habits is that they all have the same skeleton. There is a cue and a reward. For example, the habit of brushing your teeth. It is triggered when you wake up in the morning and you have bad breath. Okay, so that immediately in your brain is like, oh, gotta brush my teeth. The problem with habits though, is that once a habit feedback loop is created, your brain can never forget it. And so the only way that you can stop doing this habit is to avoid the trigger that even causes it in the first place. And for a lot of people, it's social media. The psychology is when you are scrolling on Instagram and you see a certain person, that face, like that account is the cue, the trigger that immediately sets off this autopilot spiral in your brain. As a social media influencer, 
there. You would think that I'm on social media all the time because of my job, but I'm actually barely on social media because if you put me on Instagram for even 15 minutes and I'm scrolling, I start to feel shitty about myself. And I realized that going on social media is the trigger for that unrealistic comparison. And so I put time limits on all my social media pages. I deleted all my social media apps from my home screen. So the only way that I can access it is by searching the name. I also make it a hard rule that I do not go on social media unless I have to post something. It's not stop comparing yourself, it's stop even giving yourself the opportunity to sneak a glance and let that negative feedback loop be triggered by the cue that happens to be that account. Make your environment conducive to triggering your good habits and not your bad ones, including the mental ones. The second tip is if you are going to engage in fitness, consistency and frequency is more important than intensity and duration. I think we often lose sight of this, but exercise is for feeling good. Looking good is just a byproduct. And another quote that really puts this into context is every action you take is a vote for the type of person you are becoming. And so every time you hold a yoga pose for even five minutes, you are casting a vote for, I'm somebody who doesn't skip a workout. A lot of the traps that we fall into, especially in the new year is we set unrealistic expectations, but because that homework is so weighty, every time we skip, we feel shitty because we're getting further and further away from this version of ourselves that we want to be. And so instead of promising and failing to keep the promises of these intense commitments, cast many votes for yourselves on a more frequent basis. I only work out for a max of 30 minutes a day. And if I don't feel like running, I do not force myself to run. I do a yoga stretch. I cast a vote for the person that I want to become, which is a someone who doesn't skip workouts. Third is be more vulnerable because this allows for increased normalization of the struggles that we all go through. There's this great quote by another favorite author of mine, Brene Brown. Vulnerability is the first thing we look for in other people, but the last thing that we want to show in ourselves. Everyone wants to see what's underneath to know that we are not alone. And I think this video is a huge step toward me being vulnerable and trying to normalize this entire journey that I feel like all of us go through in our heads so often, but not enough people are talking about it. I was almost on the brink of like, oh, but like, do I really want to share that part of myself? Yes, I should. I know a lot of you guys are watching my videos. And that brings me to my final portion of this video. I know that some of you are probably watching and going like, well, it's so easy for you to sit there and say that because you look this certain way. Yes, I acknowledge that as an influencer, putting my face and body online, it takes a certain visual standard to get here to make a living. But I want to step back and think about the fact that saying whether or not somebody has a right to feel insecure or unconfident, we are already subscribing to an invisible standard of you have to fall beneath this metric to even deserve to feel insecure. Me doing a visual profession makes me unworthy of being as insecure as like a person who doesn't. But at the same time, this visual profession profession perpetuates that same system of insecurity for both me and for you. Think about why the skincare industry exists, why the beauty industry exists, to fulfill a need. And as long as that need exists, that business stays in business. And although I don't want to do the cop-out answer of like, capitalism, that is the reason for all our problems, there is a beauty in sitting back and realizing that we are all players in this game that we never signed up to be part of, but in realizing we are part of this game and system, we can start dismantling the rules a little bit. That's, I think, where I will end this video. Again, this video comes from a very intimate and deep place in my heart, and I thought that there was no better time to address this than at the beginning of a new year. I put out a poll on my community tab of what you guys want to see more from me, and a lot of you guys wanted me to tackle more topics about happiness and mental health, and I think this is only the beginning of that movement. We're all just human beings trying to figure it out and be our best. I'll see you next week. Uligans, which is our new fandom name. I love you, bye.